Okay, now we move on to Staphylococcus aureus. Staphylococcus aureus is one of the most significant pathogens of humans. It causes an extensive array of human diseases, including skin infections, eye infections, foodborne illness, toxic shock syndrome, and may have a role in sudden infant death syndrome. It is great concern in nosocomial infections, which are hospital acquired infections. Because of our constant battle to keep this pathogen at bay, it has developed significant resistance to many antibiotics. Methicillin resistant Staph aureus or MRSA, MRSA, is of particular concern. Many MRSA strains are resistant to multiple antibiotics, with some becoming close to untreatable. A growing emergency is the recent strains that are resistant to vancomycin, a last line of defense drug against this bacterium. Transmission is by direct contact with an infected individual. Staph aureus properties. Staphylococcus aureus is a gram-positive cocci of about one micron in diameter. It forms grape-like clusters, and the word staph, Lee, in Greek, means a bunch of grapes. S. aureus is a catalase positive, and the catalase reaction is important in distinguishing it from another important genus of pathogens, the streptococci. Staphylococcus are common inhabitants of the skin. They are facultative with lactic acid being an end product of sugar fermentation, but will perform oxidative phosphorylation when oxygen is present. Enrichment of staphylococci is relatively easy on salt-containing medium because the genus is salt-tolerant. Of 28 known species of staphylococcus, only S. aureus and S. epidermidis are known to infect humans. Interestingly, 30% uh, of humans have S. aureus in their nasal tract and some people harbor uh, MRSA. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the disease course. S. aureus causes a wide range of pus forming infections, including superficial boils and styes, tissue infections, pneumonia, meningitis, urinary tract infections, and deep seated infections. So these all cause similar pathologies, uh, elevated temperature, swelling, and accumulation of pus, and then it, the immune system will wall it off in a fibrin clot and form an abscess. That's the ones that we're gonna talk about. All right, Staph aureus pathogenesis. Staph aureus can form a deadly cocktail of surface molecules and toxins. Surface proteins promote the colonization of host tissues and help it bind. Invasins promote bacterial species spread in tissues. Hyaluronidase dissolves the cementing compound between cells, allowing in intercellular spread, so outside the cells. Surface factors inhibit phagocytic engulfment. For example, capsules will shield surface structures to which phagocytes can bind. Also, protein A binds the conserved structures of antibodies. This is causing them to attach in reverse orientation. The antibody will attach in reverse orientation and prevent the signaling of other immune responses. So it kind of nullifies antibody attack. S. aureus produces substances that enhance their survival in phagocytes. Carotenoids and catalase will short circuit mechanisms in phagocytes to kill them. Protein A, coagulase, and clumping factor provide immunological disguises that hide the bacterium from the immune system. Finally, membrane-damaging toxins such as hemolysins, leukotoxin, and leukocytin lyse eukaryotic cell membranes. These are toxic to white blood cells, which is you know, what a lot of the immune system is made up of, and will stop phagocytes from killing the bacterium. As you can see, this pathogen is incredibly adept at fighting the immune system and infections with it can be extremely difficult for uh, a human to deal with. Fortunately, most of the time antibiotics work on this organism. Diagnosis and treatment. To diagnose this, you look for symptoms and culturing. Uh, the symptoms of SA infection are pretty obvious because you'll get lar large abscesses that are red and painful to the touch and ooze, you know, pus, so they're kind of disgusting. But 
it will be cultured to confirm. Uh, once cultured, they will do a gram stain looking for gram positive cocci and clumps and a catalase test, which again, differentiates it from other organisms. Uh, antimicrobial sensitivity testing is essential because there's many drug resistant S. aureus strains and you have to use the right drug to get rid of it. Treatment is with antibiotics. Uh, Beta-lactam antibiotics such as napacillin have been successful. With MRSA, you may need to use vancomycin or others. And again, drug resistance is becoming a big issue. That's it for Staphylococcus aureus.